five points in autonomous and two points during teleoperated period. So definitely a nice point jump if you can score hot. Now, when you <coughs> score into your opponent's castle, the ball goes into the driver station, and then your human player will bring it back out onto the field through the station that you guys are standing in. So I'm gonna go over here. But what's important to note is that once you throw the ball through the goal, your opponent gets it. Okay, so there's really no chance of immediately recycling that ball back into play. So make sure that you make your decision carefully. Okay? Now, when you're in this zone, in this courtyard in front of the castle, and you're trying to score, you have to be completely inside this zone, and there can only be one defender of the other alliance in this area. Right? So you that's kind of a nice thing. You only have to go through at least one defender. I'm getting there's like speakers in the ceiling, so the feedback's weird. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of the match. In autonomous mode, there are a row of six balls located right through the center of this field. There are three balls available to be preloaded in your robots, so each robot can start with one ball in their robot, and there are another three balls that are located inside of your castle with your human player. That's it, okay? So a total of 18 balls in play. Okay, so that's something that you have to think about, especially when we start getting into how you score in some of these goals, is how many balls will be available and how frequently they will. You know, it may be really easy to climb stuff and do things quickly, but if there are no balls available, you gotta kinda keep that into play. So, in autonomous mode, your goal for this ball in your opponent's goal. You get points for crossing these barriers, all you need to do is cross to get a, to get points, and then you add points if you can score a goal. Those point values are... Okay, so if you drive forward and your wheel touches this, you get two points. So, quite literally, drive forward three feet, get two points. You're all going to do that, right? Yes, okay. Um, then, crossing a defense is ten points. Hello? So, if you cross this barrier, you've now gotten 12, right? 12 points, because they add. And if you put the ball in the goal, you get 5 points for the low or 10 points up top. So, if you had a perfect auto, you would have to have crappy points. Okay? That's a not bad start to a match. And that's just one robot. Okay? So, in auto, both teams are trying to do that. Right after they take over a tele-operated, you're going to kind of go through the motion, and that's when balls and scoring come into play. So, let's talk about these barriers. So, you may notice that there are a lot of barriers on the field, okay? Each team's castle has five stations for defenses. There are nine types of defenses that could be in play. They change every single match. Which means, one, one type of defense is always going to be there. So this little curtain, which has, has a steel pipe in the bottom of it, is always going to be at the corners of the field. And then, your alliance gets to choose three of the things you want on the field. So, it's your castle, you defend your castle with three obstacles, and then, the last obstacle is actually decided by the, by the audience at the event. So the audience is going to vote, and every every few matches, I, this is the weirdest thing in the manual, but every like, five matches, there'll be a vote with like the type of obstacle, there's categories of obstacles, and then they will rotate through those categories of obstacles every few matches. So three of them you get to decide, one of them is fixed, and the other one is the, the choice. So, every single match will be slightly different. So when you guys are looking at designing drivetrains, things you have to get over, think about the fact that if you just design a drivetrain to cross this bump right here, or this step, there's a pretty good shot in maybe half your matches that that step might not even be there. And then with that, as teams scout and watch the event, they're gonna know which barrier you go over and which ones you can't. 
And when you get into nations or even <coughs> later matches regional, teams are going to choose the barriers that you can't get. It's in their own best interest for you to struggle. So the more barriers that your robot can cross, the better it is. So I just want to point out and look at a couple. We have all nine assortments on here. They're just sides. Both alliances get access to the same, the same one. So you could have the same one on this side. Which the same one on this side. Okay, so you have the curtain. So the hard thing about this curtain, first of all, it's heavy at the bottom. It's weighted with a steel pipe. But guess what? It's a fixed height. Right? So your robot has to be short or collapsible to go underneath of it. So that's an interesting challenge. This is the... It's Sally Port. They all have really fun medieval names. So this is the Sally Port, which, when it's open, is a really nice, easy obstacle. The problem is, is that it opens towards the courtyard. So if you're trying to score, you actually have to go up with your robot and open this somehow and then drive through. That might be a really interesting thing for a partner to help you with if you can open it for someone else. Something like that. Cheval de Freeze. Okay? So these little guys are these little teeter totters. When you go over them, they form a ramp and they'll go over, but they're weighted. So the moment you go over them, they always get back to this. They put a little so this is wood at the bottom. equal yeah. in both directions. Remember, you have to cross barriers to get in there and to get out. So, you know, once you go through this one on one direction, coming back through it is pretty darn simple. But there's ones like this that might be a lot harder. This is the porticullis, porticullis uh, which is like a gate that you have to lift to go through. So... Again, it's another one of those things. How tall is your robot? How high do you have to lift that up to go through? Do you need a special mechanism to actually lift that up and go through? Um, this is rough terrain, or the, I thought it was called like the folder wall, rough wall or something. Okay, we also call this the uh, 70s art style. Um, but basically it's a bunch of steel square tubing that's been cut. Um, one of the things specifically on this one that you have to worry about is how wide your wheels are. Um, the obstacle is, is challenging, but you also definitely don't want to get your wheels jammed into one of these little tiny slots because that would be terrible. Um, so, that's those. Over on the side, you've got a, the curtains. Uh, this is the moat. You can see you've got two, two banks to the moat. What? This is your water game. It's as close as you're ever going to get. Um, <laughs> So, you cross over the moat, um, be careful about high centering um, on this because once you get a wheel touching the ground, ground clearance is going to be very important on your robot this year. I don't know anything about the kit chassis, I haven't looked at it. Um, I hope that it's got enough ground clearance to climb over some of these. Odds are, it's not enough to climb over all of them. So, just accepting your kit chassis may not be the right way to go this year, but you'll have to do that experimentation on yourself. This is called ramparts. It's two ramps, they're fixed in either direction. So this is another one that is equal in difficult both directions, because it never changed. So with the moat. Um, your drawbridge, which is similar to your uh, sally port, you have to pull it down from the direction that you're going, and then it springs back. It's pretty tough. Oh. Um, and then this is the, what? Rock wall. Oh, so rock wall. Okay. Um, so um, if you guys are familiar with the 2012 game, if your team played that game, this bump is very similar to that one, but this is about three quarters of an inch. So if you struggle in 12, it's going to be harder this year. Um, so those are all of the different obstacles on the field. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so inch, one of the more interesting things that we saw while doing the game uh, is the way that ranking works. So fortunately this year it's back to win-loss tie and ranking points, which means if you're hockey fans, it's you get two points for a win and one for a tie, zero for a loss. And that is the primary method 
for ranking teams. So obviously you win more, the better off you are. Now there is something very, very unique that FIRST has never done in the ranking of this year, and it is the ability to earn extra ranking points through on-field action. So which means, typically, you go to a match, you get two points, if you win, you get zero if you lose. Well, in this game, you can lose and get two points. And so, in this game, you can get an extra ranking point by going over the obstacles, four of the five obstacles, two times. So eight crossings gets you one ranking point regardless of anything else in the game. Yes? I don't have that level of detail. Does it matter which direction you're crossing in? For, for the ranking points. We'll, we'll look that up while we're, while we're continuing to talk. Um, you also get one... Yes, it's per alliance. Right, so your alliance can do a, a concerted effort. But what that also means is diversity, right? So this year's ranking, when this year's, uh, this year's robots, if you just build for the easiest ones, and everybody on your alliance builds for the easiest ones, you may not have the ability to get those extra ranking points. So, something to consider. But obviously, judge the difficulty of the obstacles with your abilities as a team, right? But you can do really well in just by driving in this game. And we've confirmed that you have to cross from neutral to okay. the courtyard. Okay, so you have to go neutral into the courtyard. So you can't just like go over and like... I guess you could like go over and come back and go over. But yeah, four trips, and you, get, you get the idea. Yeah. Just, just to clarify, it's sure. four of the five opposing team's obstacles. Correct. So you go back over yours. Correct. Okay. Four of the five opposing team obstacles. So not only will they be, they're not only going to have you four of the five twice, it's also four of the five that you didn't choose and are probably most likely the hardest ones. Because let's face it, wouldn't you choose the hardest ones for your opponent? Um, I would make the assumption that if you guys as a team build some of these obstacles and test them and rank them in hardest to easiest, you're going to see the hardest ones most frequently. I mean, it's just going to happen. Now, there may be things where you go make a deal with your opponent, you know, gracious and collaboration, where you may say, hey, look, we need this obstacle, we'll put this, th some of that may happen, but assume you're going to see the hardest ones most of the time. So, for, what? The hardest ones for you, but I assume you're going to give the other team the hardest ones. Oh, the hardest ones will be on the field. Okay. Capability. What else we got? Here? You either make an expert at something or a jack of all trades. Hold on a second. We have no none. So it depends on which, what niche role the team decides to occupy. Let's make a reassure one that can go through the first. Yeah. What else would we do? Then there's the question: What capabilities would we? Oh yeah. Have uh, so the other way that you can actually earn ranking points on the field is through eight scores. Work with? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. if you score thing. the ball the eight times in your opponent's castle, either high or low, it doesn't matter, you get one ranking point. Which means that if you win and dominate this game, you'll get four ranking points. And ultimately, really what that brings down to is one match... Oh, eight. oh they don't get the ranking points. Okay, 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 sorry. This is the 20-minute rules, guys, okay? So everybody who's filming me, like, you need to clarify these rules on your own. Um, okay, so you get the other ranking points for surrounding the castle at the end of the match. So what happens is um, you, you capture the castle. You need to score eight times to have the ability to capture the castle, and you can capture the castle by having all three of your robots up on the platform at the end, or through hanging. I don't know. Look at those rules, but ultimately what it comes down to is that if you play the perfect match and you have the, the great alliance, you have the ability to get the points for two wins in one match. So this may not be the type of game where if you lose a match or lose two matches, you're out of being an alliance captain. You may be able to like lose a little bit and then come back strong at the very end and bump your ranking up. Really important. Ranking is one of those things that you've got to think about how your robot not just plays on the field, but how it will play at the tournament as a whole. So let's talk about um, weakening the castle, right? So there's a number of different element points to this thing. Um, so 
if you score, in order to hang, hanging is fun, right? Everybody likes to build hanging robots? Yeah? Okay, so, but in order to get points for hanging, you have to weaken the castle. So, if you build an awesome hanger that can't score the ball, you're probably in trouble, right? So, eight points. Now, a couple of rules to scoring. This is kind of, I'm sorry this is kind of sporadic, but we're all kind of digesting. Um, you can only bring one ball over every crossing, right? So you have to bring the ball over, cross, and score. You cannot have, according to what we've read so far, it doesn't look like you can have a robot in the middle that just passes balls. So like every single team has to go get a ball from their zone, their human player, or somewhere in the middle, and then cross a barrier. So every boulder represents a crossing. So that means you have to cross, as an alliance, eight times to score eight. Yeah. I, I suspect that, that's a, I don't think you have to score the ball, that'd be really mean, but like, uh, I think you, but you have to, to move the ball from one zone to the next, you have to cross. So yeah, 